only this final race remaining on the calendar and the driver championship already locked up by Rene Osterkamp and he and his Sim RC team made Patrick Kessler safe as team champions. Our attention turns not to the banger, but the gong. Not to the sinner, but the wrong. Not to the singer, but the song. After 11 seasons, the sword that is the Formula Renault 2.0 will be permanently sheathed. Jean-Francois Godin, Christian Cope, Uni the Unit, Slavasi, Jerome the Earthquake, Christian to Catch all yielded the weapon on the quest to their crowns. In season six, Cope became the first two-time champion. Season seven went to Adam Tierney, and then Osterkamp went back to back. Last season, Patrick Kretzler found his way to the throne only to be unseated by this season by Rene Osterkamp, whose record three titles will stand unmatched because with two new versions of the Renault waiting in the wings, this version 2.0 makes its farewell performance today. And what better track to uncork the celebratory champagne than one with a corkscrew? Today, from Laguna Seca, it is the final round of Apex Online Racing's Formula Renault 2.0 Season 11 Championship and you can witness all the action of this doubleheader event live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. From the adopted hometown of Clint Eastwood, hello and welcome to another GSRC broadcast. Joe Peak is away competing in the Western State Cinder Claus competition, judging children impish or admirable. So joining yours truly to bring you our words, I believe this seventh slogger. John Ambrose has directed to his arm with cameras locked and loaded by Doug Beer. Okay, Stefan, lots of changes coming with iRacing's new build just a few days away. Along with the aforementioned Renault 3.0 and 3.5 is the official renaming of today's venue. But no matter what you call it, it races the same. Tell us a little bit about Laguna Seca. Well, Bill, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, formerly known as Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, is an interesting track, I tell you that much. Comprising a great amount of elevation change was always its trademark. Besides, the famous corkscrew, obviously. Built in 1957 on part of US Army's Fort Ord, formerly uh, an incredible fast track, the first real braking zone was Turn 4, the same turn that is today, Turn 6. Apart from building the infield in 1988 and pushing turns 10 and 11 back a few hundred meters, the majority of the track still stands proud in the dry lagoon like it did in 1957. Many cars have seen this track, but today we're here with our beloved former Renault 2.0 to give it a great show and action is guaranteed on this old school track for one last time. But let's not waste any more time and have you jump on board with our GSRC lap guide? Alright, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC Formula Renault 2.0, so let's do a lap around Laguna Seca. Turn 1 is nothing in this car, just keep your foot to the floor over the big rise, and then drift to the right to set up for the Andretti hairpin. This will probably be the best place for an overtake on the track, but the downhill braking is going to make it easy to overshoot this double apexer. As you come off the exit, bring it over to the left and then get it mowed up for three. This corner really tightens up on the exit, and it's not uncommon to see drivers slide the car off into the dirt on the outside. From there we approach four, which requires a little lift even in this high downforce open wheeler. But carrying your speed through that kink will really pay off, because anyone slow will be vulnerable down into turn five. The camber and compression of the uphill climb means you can get away with braking pretty late, but once again, the speed off the corner is what really counts. Momentum up this steep hill will be pretty important, especially because you don't want to go too wide through turn six. The elevation is going to continue to rise, and you'll just carry the car over to the left. Find a reference point at the blind rise and try not to lock up the brakes as you set up for the corkscrew. The track really disappears through the first apex of this frightening chicane, and the second apex is a hope and a prayer. But we're immediately into rainy curve. Take a wide entry and hit the apex very late. Then swing the car back to the left side of the track and try to carry your speed through the banking of 10. From there, you've got one last place to maybe sneak a pass in through the final hairpin. Just make sure not to compromise your exit too much or else you'll be slow down the main straight. But as we come to the line, we've now finished a lap around Laguna Seca. The 
Sky Racing was your only source for what California looks like based on Sonoma Auto Club Speedway and here at Laguna Seca. You'd expect the state to be traversed by nomadic caravans of camels. Now, with the last round at Sebring not being a doubleheader event, there is no need to traverse the best of day honors as there are no results to combine, so let's go straight to the point standings. With 32 points in his pocket, the 69 point gap is too big to close. Strike up the band, let the confetti rain, release the balloons from the net, fill up the dance floor, and pop the champagne. Rene Osterkamp had a season no one will forget. SimRC goes 1 2, but with Patrick Kessler out of drop insurance, Lubimir Morris could get the second spot for PSR Green. Sim Racing RC goes 1 2, but Patrick Kessler out of drop insurance. We talked about that. AOR Orange makes the top five twice with longtime teammate Phil Reed and Kerry Nolden sitting in fourth and fifth. Let's go ahead now and look at the team championship. If you sit one, two in the driver's championship, if your team is not atop the team championship, there's some serious bad math going on. No bad math here. Sim RC clearly the class in the field. Phil Reed and Kerry Nolden won the very first Renault team championship racing under the banner of Aperture Racing, the duo will not be able to book in their crowns. Expert thought Alexei Sorokin and Lubomir Morris would be a threat for the title. Sim RC proved too strong, but with a new car, brings new hope. The German combo of Stefan Herman and Simon Grossman picked up a win. Sim RC Retro in fourth. Sometimes they make the overlays, sometimes they don't. She loves me, she loves me not. She loves me! Team AOR Blue, powered by Charlie Summers and Daniel Morris in fifth. All right, let's quickly go to the series details. Well, it's easy and straightforward. As I already said, we're here on the last round of this 12 round series. Drivers had three drops in total. Um, today's format, we will have a double header 40 minutes first and then afterwards a 25 minutes sprint race. Open setups so you can tinker away all you want. And if you happen to have an incident, you will not be able to hop into your second car so you really have to be careful here in the races but obviously between the races if you wreck you can get in there again so Stefan let's go ahead and look at the details here of this feature race that's coming up first well as I said a feature race 40 minutes the grid will be sequential obviously you qualify first you get in first pit stop we will have one pit stop here um, the incident cap will be 15 incidents. I don't think that will be any problem for anyone today, as this track is quite generous on its limits. Points for the win, you get 32 uh, pace to 20th in total, so 20th will get one last point. For the sprint, we will invert the top 20, but if you're in the top 20 and greater than two laps down, you will not be in uh, the first positions, but you will be graded right behind this inverted top 20. All the business just about taken care of, as you can see right now, it's a bit of an overcast day. Let's have Stefan talk a little bit about the weather and what it might mean for the drivers here in California. Well, as we know, this car uh, does like its tires, so it's not very hard on them. So we do not expect anything uh, with problems here, as you can see, overcast 69 on the temp uh, on both the air and track. Um, obviously, in the pit stop, you will be able to change your tires, so there's no problem with that, even if we would have too much heat on the track. Uh, winds are from the east with 4 miles per hour, so no issue there. And our humidity, yes, you see, right? We're in California, it's 5% humidity, so. Get your drinks ready because we will run quite dry here. Most of the big names here today, Kerry Nolden not showing up. He sits fifth in the point, so he'll have to hope that uh, drop races can go ahead and keep him in the top five. I'm not so sure that's going to be the case, but Osterkamp, Kessler here, as is Reed, Lubomir Morris here as well. Some other big names to keep an eye on. Matty Sippola is always fun to watch. He'll be racing as well. We have uh, 23 drivers put in qualifying times. Looks like 27 entry names. And qualifying is just about done. So with that said, and this being a standing start and a fairly large grid, let's go to that starting grid right now. And it is indeed 
Our season 11 champion, Renee Osterkamp, started on the pole. He's going to be inside of Phil Reed. Charlie Summers and Maddie Sippla. There's Sippla. I told you, watch out for him. He'll be in fourth. Luke Barton, another quick driver. If he can stay out of trouble, he's going to be inside of Patrick Kessler, the defending champ. Dominic, Domin, uh, Dominic Gatermeyer, always fun to watch in seventh. Connor Ryan flanking him. Josh Ladd and Vitalia Lander. Lander's fast in tenth. Daniel J. Morris in 11th, Stefan Hermann in 12th, Alan Tessier 13th, Evan R.T. Emery 14th, Alexei Sirotkin 15th, Libo Memorich 16th, Knut Martinsen 17th, he's your last car within one second of the pole lap, 17 cars that is, right here, Alistair Hay 18th, Erko Lindstrom 19th and Lloyd Barbet 20th. In the flatjack, Matteo Coppola, he's going to be inside of Tom Edwards in the double one spot. Last driver to put in a qualifying time, David Santana. 24th, 25th, and 26th go to Lucas Guarani, Sara Dove, and Tom Van Hoyen. Three drivers not able to qualify. Possibly they didn't put in a clean lap, or maybe they are serving a penalty. It is the final race. Season 11 GSRC has been here for a lot of them. You can see that California sky, the overcast sky, pushing down on the racetrack as we look at our pole sitter, Renee Ostergamp. It's a double header today, looking for one pit stop. They can pit any time they like. Fuel's not an issue. There is no restriction on the fuel limit. The only rule is they have to come in and change tires and they need to do that before the white flag lap. No championship on the line, no team championship on the line. This is just for fun and bragging rights and get a little momentum, Stefan, going into season 12. Well, it will be most definitely interesting what will happen with uh, season 12, but let's first finish at season 11 before we talk about season 12, because we will have a lot to talk about for season 12. You can hear those engines start to harmonize for the last time. Gather at the chicken tank, cover behind the cows, the horses are out of the barn, and it is your eventual champion, Renee Osterkamp, leading the way, being challenged by Phil Reed. Reed's going to try to do it on the outside of the end, ready here, but that's not going to work. Back in third position, Charlie Summers, Matty Simple looking on, and in fifth, Luke Barton, some big names up front. Bit of a traffic jam behind, but everything very clean so far, and we have the first few cars single line as we just saw a little bit of a challenge there from Phil Reed. Matty Coppola having, Matteo Coppola having trouble in the back. We don't need to go to it as he got collected. There were a few cars got involved. Another one involved was Urka Lindstrom. Also Tom Edwards. So the back of the field had a little bit of an issue. Up front, they are still racing clean. Phil Reed. Phil Reed were off. Was in terms of losing a handful of positions up to the Cooks group. Side by side there with Josh Ladd, as we are able to see, and he's able to defend eighth he position was, there from Jordan Ladd. He was going side by side, he was trying to make a pass on the outside of six on Ostercamp. That didn't work because he went off into the California sand. This is another position. Plenty of time to make that up as they go through the corks group for oh. the first time. And with that said, go ahead, what do you got? Sipola, you were able to see it right on your screen with a big slide out of the last turn, able to get it together here but he is now under pressure of Patrick Kessler obviously and has the inside yeah. here for turn one and up front a pass for the lead Charlie Summers gets Rados to camp new leader Summers now up in front Oster camp with about four seconds a four tenths of a second on Luke Barden Maddie Sipla making up from that mistake in fourth Patrick Kessler in fifth. Where is Phil Reed? Well, Reed is back up into sixth position after his mistake in quarter number six on the yes. tail of Patrick Kessler. Phil Reed already making up. Oh, that's a wreck. Who is that? In the wall. That is Luke Barton. That's think. Luke Barton. Well, he just lost. He was racing in third position. Take a look at this one. Stefan, you saw it live. The car just gets loose. The car just gets loose, but it's all his own making right there. Going into turn six, he rides the outside curb way too much, halfway over the curb on the grass. Nearly has to catch, but we 
because he has too much dirt on his tires, he loses it into the tire wall, he goes and he seems to be racing somewhat fine right now in the life of us. That line. Seven, correct me if I'm wrong about this one, but it almost seems in these cars, it's not so much the curbing that is the problem. So we're going to look at Charlie Summers coming up on the back of the lap car of Urkel Lindstrom. But sometimes when it when it straddles the curbing, the, the, the car almost seems to, to bottom out. Am, am I right on that? Um, it depends on your setup. Obviously, you have to keep in mind turn six in the bottom of the box because you have a lot of uh, uh, force pushing your uh, car into the ground there. So you have to adjust your car in that. But the real problem here is not the curb, but the sand that is right after it, because that really can catch you out like we saw with um, Luke Martin. Riding on board with Camp right now. Summers made the pass, but after he did, he's not able to pull away. Camp stalking him. Matt is in the back there in third. Got things settled down a bit. Kessler, the fun battle back for fourth. Well, let's go look at this one here, if we can get away from this for a second. This is Kessler, Reed is challenging him. Connor Ryan, in fact, Connor Ryan under attack from Josh Ladd right now. I think Ladd is going to get him. It does seem so. Let's see if Connor Ryan can do something here on the brakes in the turn. One Mario on the red hairpin, as it is called. But no, he has to succeed uh, uh, position six here in turn two. Yeah, so Ladd moves up on spot. Josh is from to watch. Ryan back into seventh. Another fast driver. Terry Alander back there in eighth. Very competitive racing right now. Might be so competitive because uh, Summers is out there in Ostercamp who might be faster. He's your pole sitter, but he's just not able to... Uh, well, actually, he sits... Yeah, he was on the pole. He's just not able to get around Summers right now. It is quite interesting that Summers got past Ostercram, but um, the second... Here's a fun one. We're looking at Gator Meyer and, and Stefan Herman. Gator Meyer actually was quite lucky there once oh, again. Get him. Wow. Twice quite lucky there for Gator Meyer going over bumps. That's Lubomir Morris peeking up on the inside. He's going to lose all momentum out of that one. That's going to give an opportunity to the Rolling Thunder. Evan Emery back in 12th. Look at Emery. He's got, he's got nowhere to put the car as he leaves to the outside. He goes through one, which really isn't much of a corner now. Emery trying to get some momentum around the outside. And he kills Emery still fighting and getting this out. He's going to get the pass made now, I think. Yes, he does. And the two cars in front of him go very, very, very wide there, so... Oh! Oh! That's heavy there for Evan. Oh boy, that's three cars out of the race. Got into the back of Dominic Gatermeyer, then got woed up. Then Evan Emery got punched. He goes on his lid. Lubomir Moore is involved in it as well. Well, this is exactly what I was talking about with the dirty tires here. The sand is so, so, so dangerous here that you have to be quite careful coming back onto the track. And yeah, they yeah, kind of paid the price. Yeah, Evan Emmy prides himself on doing really well in the sprint race, doing trying to get a decent run in the in the feature, then getting regrid and performing in the sprint. Not going to happen today, as he's not going to get any benefit from a regrid. We're back up front now, looking at the two leaders, Rene Oskamp with a second and a half lead over Matty Sipla. That's for second. All that going on behind Charlie Summers. Fun battle back here, Stefan, with Kessler being hounded by Josh Ladd. Josh Ladd's coming with a good run. Yeah, Kessler made a big mistake there going onto the uh, dirt as he tried to turn in. The car obviously did nothing to uh, there, but Kessler is able to hold the inside line. Will he be able to? No, he has to give it up for the Laddie up in the fifth around Kessler. Daria Lander looking on from seventh. Kessler fighting back the Swiss cheese machine as they head towards the corkscrew. Careful, boy! Woo. Down the hill they go. Great 
They are fighting very hard here for this fifth position. This allows Phil Reed to just storm away from the two, already having nearly a two second gap between uh, him and Josh Ladd. Remember, Reed qualified on the outside of row one, had that mistake go way back. You heard Stefan talk about it. He's worked his way back up now. He's about eight tenths of a second behind Maddie Sippla. Sippla having a good run. Well, I don't know what Kessler is trying to do, probably getting back this fifth position, but he has to think long term here. They are really fighting way too hard here for fifth position and losing Phil Reed, who is majorly catching up to Matthias Sikula in front of him. They're already within half a second. Right off the bat of Josh Ladd, you can see that Kessler is being pestered by Mario Ladd back there. Kessler in the yellow car, right behind the wing, right above the wing, and then the car, second in line. That is a and he has worked in both sides of the track, trying to see if he can find a way around the defending champion. Into the corkscrew for the seventh time. Look at this, Stefan. We talked about Reed trying to make it up. Here he comes on Maddie. Reed wants to get back onto this podium and he wants to whoa bit too quick trying to do it there i was very lucky for phil reed oh you make a bad exit out of that final corner and you pay the price all the way down into the andretti hairpin nevertheless reed able to hang in there let's go ahead and stay on this one for a while and let's see what phil reed can do working on sipla Tell you, corner number five, not a big issue for me. For those of us who are talent uh, challenged, five is okay. This is the one that is scary. This is six. <laughs> well, this turn here is always scary, no matter what car you drive. It is a real challenge for your testicles. <laughs> yes, it is indeed. And I end up hitting the wall both on the right side and coming across and hitting it on the left side as well. Sipla able to hold off Reed right now, but we'll check back in on that one a little bit later as he's got some work to do. Well, i tell you something, Josh Ladd, he is catching up with the two cars in front of him. So that is also quite interesting as he got past Kessler, he is now storming off. Um, speaking about storming, Valtteri Olander, he is right behind Mr. Kessler and he also wants to storm by the German. Yeah, you know, you made a good point. Josh Ladd, a driver not the greatest qualifier that we've seen, but man, he knows how to race. I've seen him work his way through the field more than once this season. There he is, and right behind you see the Swiss cheese colored car of Kessler being hounded by Alander. Connor Ryan back there qualified in eighth, still looking on from eighth position. Well, when... When we talk about someone who is storming up the field, we also have to say someone who is trying to do the same but not really able to, and that is Stefan Kalman. He started in 12th, he's right now 9th, and he is not someone we expect to be just inside a top 10. Yeah, really an uh, underperforming performance here from, from Herman right now, back there going through the corkscrew. Not the case, though. Can we talk about the driver in 11? Let's give a little love to some of these guys that are having great runs. Loic Barbie, all by himself, really no one to race around right now, in 11th, up nine spots. And just behind him, Stefan, look at this. Tom, now, he didn't put in a qualifying time, so it's a little bit misleading, but Tom Van Hoyman. Hoyman up uh, to 12th from 26th. Yeah, impressive run from Tom. Whatever was his issue in qualifying, we'll never find out. But... That is still a very impressive recovery here, starting 26 into 12. Let's see what he can do in the remainder of this race. Look at him. We're going to have to take our attention back up to third now, because after Phil Reed made a stab at Sipla, lost all that momentum, Phil Reed has got it back, and now he's two car lengths back. Both these drivers are losing touch with the drivers in front of them as uh, Ostercamp and Summers begin to drive away. Up now by four and a half seconds. Reed would like to get around Sipla and then see if he has anything for the guys up in front. 
Yeah, it is quite interesting. The top two are... Oh, everyone goes a bit wide there. Um, top two are driving about half a second faster than everyone behind them. So they are out of contention for anyone else but themselves. But obviously we have the party here behind between Sipula, yeah. Reed and Josh of Land. You know, oh, there's a mistake. So there goes Reed around the outside of Sipula and he's going to bring Josh Land with him. You know, you talked about Reed and Sipula maybe not having the pace for the guys up front. We don't know what kind of pace Josh Land has because he's been closing in on everybody. Look at this though. Fighting back is simple as they go too wide through the Andretti hairpin. Momentum now to a lad who took the long way around. I think he should be in position to finish this off in the three. He does. Well, I can tell you that was not a mistake from Machi. It was actually a slowdown as he did not accelerate out of the last turn. Ah, that does it. So lad now up into fourth. Reed finally got away. From all the drives he's going around, now we'll see if Reed has anything for the guys up front. Let's give you that interval. Six seconds between Camp and Reed. We'll see if Reed has anything for him. Again, I think Josh Ladd might be the fastest of those three cars back there. Reed, Camp. I'm sorry, Reed, Ladd, and Simple. Oh, ooh, oh, oh, Jesus my. Christ, Ladd. Keep it cool. Going into the back there will fill Reed ahead of him. But as I said, it will be interesting to see what Josh Ladd and Phil Reed can do now that they're past Zipula, who clearly wants to slow off the three. But as we all know, strategy can play quite a big favor, and especially in a race where you have to pit at least once. Um, speaking about strategy, Patrick Kessler, he has caught up now too with the three in front of him. So he will be the next to challenge Matty Zipula for his fifth place. And we've seen Kessler do this all season long. He's really, really good the second half of the race. Sometimes he doesn't. He saves a little bit of the stuff early on, and he's really strong later. So let's see if he can put these guys have sit for Lad and Reed. Racing third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Summers and Ostergam still have a nice Friday drive. Right off the board with the tail of Sipla. There, they're riding away from me now, going up the hill. Well, I can tell you something, Bill. Josh Ladd is looking incredibly racing behind uh, Phil Reed here, and I don't think it will take too much longer until Josh Ladd will try the first time to get past Phil Reed here for third place. Later, we'll walk the dog through some of the back half of the field, but honestly, Whoa. not a lot of reason. Go ahead. As you were able to see, Josh Ladd there going way wide in the second last turn, nearly having to take over to the pit entry there to stay on track. So, yeah, very lucky there for Josh Ladd that there was no wall. Not a lot of battles farther back outside the top 10. Really, the most fun that we're looking at is right up here. Reed, Ladd. Sipula and Kessler. Kessler's been able to drive away from Connor Ryan. There's those four guys racing for third position. The red car, that is Josh Ladd. Okay, uh, one thing we have to talk here real quick while these guys are kind of sorting themselves out and waiting for a new storm to brew up. Um, it, the, the thing that I want to talk about is the sand. Obviously, very tricky outside, but because you uh, uh, um, take so much curb here everywhere, uh, you drag quite a lot of uh, dirt onto the racing line, and this will hurt your turn in and exit out of every single turn, lap after lap after lap, as Phil Reed makes a mistake there. Let's see if Josh Ladd can do something with the chance he has been given. Look at Reed trying to make up for that mistake by taking the defensive line. He's going to try to make Ladd go around the outside. We've seen this work before for Laddie, but this time Reed able to hang off Ladd too far back to get the momentum. Good fighting going on for third position. Pretty darn clean race. We haven't lost that many drivers. We saw the big incident that took out Evan Emre and... Uh, Matty Kopolov's had trouble, Davis Santana has left as well. 
Yeah, as of right now, only three cars are retired from this race, and we are about halfway into this race already. But yeah, I want just want to quickly conclude my point here. It is very dangerous to go offline on this track, so stay in a racing line, and you will have to prefer to line through the turns because of all the dirt and marbles you will face outside of the racing line. Those four cars continue to battle for third position. They've lost ground to the leaders. Now this is fun. We talked about Vitari Alander. Remember Alander was ahead of these guys. We said, boy, Herman has really had a rough time of it. Well, Herman is now up into eighth position, but Alander is, would like to get this spot. Herman qualified in 12th, Alander qualified in 10th. Yeah, it kind of does seem like that this is not Valtteri's uh, uh, track here because also he is one of the people that we normally don't see that far down the top 10 over. Yeah, we think both Kessler and Lander could probably go out and have a beer afterwards and explain how much they don't like this track because both these drivers are underachieving from what you expect them to do. A Lander actually has a win this season. He won the opening round. To show you, this guy can, he knows how to get to the victory. In fact, he has two wins as I look at my stats. So yeah, not a good day for a lander. The battle for fifth and third are now both eating up a little bit. Patrick Hessler tried to do something into the corkscrew, got blocked, nearly lost his car, uh, and now he dropped off a little bit. But Josh Light is still quite on the back here of Phil Reed. Um, as he makes a mistake out of the last turn, losing a bit of ground on Phil Reed here. So sadly we will not see any action in 2 2 We checked in on these guys and I said mark down this interval. It was 6 seconds. That was the gap between Camp oh. and Reed. Now it's up to 7.3. Uh, oh my! Altria Lander! Going around the, trying to go around the outside of Stefan Hermann, but not able to succeed. So he has to drop in behind again. That is Knut Martinsen is known for pit stop. I think he wants to repair his front wing as it is quite heavily damaged on the right side there. Uh, but I still think that this is kind of a scheduled pit stop for him. Yep. Hey, Mark, the Orange Viking, a veteran of the series. Haven't seen him racing here much lately. It's good to see him back. Bad favorite. He is in 18th position. Let's quickly take an opportunity to talk about what we'd like to call the Dos Equis spot. That's going to be Dominic Gatermeyer. Last car on the lead lap. Now he's working on Knut Martinson. Martinson has always made this pit stop. Up ahead, Tom Edwards. Edwards has had a couple of spins earlier. All these guys have made their stops. Dominic Gatermeyer, uh, the one title you do not want to have. The loser of the race, starting seventh right now in 20th he is really sadly the loser of the race here uh, losing 13 positions from his starting grid ah but 13 is not as bad as 14 back in the 21st he get three as he works around the outside there goes the new parts and not gonna bother oh. he gives it up oh my well try it again he goes for the 270 sadly did not make the 360 <laughs> 60 would have been so much quicker. <laughs> also, while this was happening, Alistair he did go into pits. He's now coming out in, I think that should be 17th. Luke Barden, the leaders of all the cars who have pitted right now. Luke racing in 13th. Speaking about Luke Barton, he just Whee! nearly crashed into Alexei Sirotkin trying to overtake him. He was taking so much more speed through turn 5 that he nearly collided with him because of the speed difference between it. Leader is in the pits, Charlie Summers making the stop from the front. Interesting. I gotta wonder if this is... Boy, now you let Rene Osterkamp go out there and hot lap. Um, speaking about Rene Osterkamp, he was actually quite far back on uh, Summers when they two pitted. So I'm gonna quickly look 
and see what happened between them. Oster Camp still with a seven and a half sets a lead. Now over Ladd. Ladd was able to get around Phil Reed while we were looking at that. We were looking at that battle. So now move Ladd. What is really second position? Really third overall once the cycle goes through. But now Ladd has got around Reed. We let's let's go ahead and see. Our director thinks we might have it. We've been watching this battle for a while, so let's see if we can take a peek at it. Be nice since Ladd had been working so hard on Reed. Here we go, it's going into the last turn here. I think it's gonna happen into turn two, probably. There it is, looks like a mistake from, from Reed there. Uh, guys, by the way, I can report Phil Reed is in a pit lane right now. So yeah, it was a mistake from Phil Reed that got Josh Ladd into second for the moment. Charlie Summers out of uh, turn 11. Going across the start finish line now. Now, this is an interesting pit exit here. It can be a little bit misleading. Reed is rolling. Summers is by him, if I have this right. Yes, he is. Yes, Summers is already in turn four. Or going to turn four now. Um, but yeah, one thing I can report on Osterkamp versus Summer. Summer was just faster than him and just drove away from Osterkamp in a matter of seven laps. Okay, so maybe he was feeling confident and said, okay, I can come in. Let's see what type of traffic Charlie Summers has to deal with. Well, pretty darn clear track in front of him. A long way to go before he gets up to the battle for sixth position. Let's look at that real quick. This is Stefan Herman and Vitaria Lander. These guys have been going at it. They're coming up on the back of Sara Dove. Sara in 21st position. Outside of the regret position, she's going to need some, some attrition to happen in front of her when we get to the 20th. Still only one lap down, she would be eligible. Let's see if the longer has any time to work. It just doesn't seem to happen. You can hang with her, but you cannot do anything with her. Top seven cars yet to pit. One of those being three time champion Renee Ostercamp. It, it is going to be interesting to see how long these people will uh, stretch out their first stint. Uh, because obviously, Rene Osterkamp, he is racing not only himself, the clock, but he's also racing Charlie Summers. So, uh, and we have to say, Rene Osterkamp being slower than someone else but his teammate, that is, I think, the first time we have to say this. Sarah takes a little seat on the branch and lets the uh, little bird, lets the cars go around. So Alander and Kermit continue on racing sixth and fifth. Alander trying to find a way around. Look at if we can afford to stay on this one a little bit. Uh, Josh Ladd and Patrick Kessler are in pits now while this battle is going on between Kermit and uh, Valtteri. The one that will be interesting, we, we expect that uh, Kessler to ease, I'm not Kessler, but Summers to easily get him. The question is, where is Phil Reed going to sort out in relationship to these guys? Reed out of the final corner now. Yes, Phil Reed is going over the start finish line right now, passing Patrick Kessler as we speak, but obviously Kessler with the short line. Josh Led will come out in front of Phil Reed and the the battle will be between Kessler and Reed, but Reed cycles out between Kessler and Josh Ladd. Yeah, so Ladd does what he needed to do. He still stays ahead of Reed, so he doesn't have to do that again. Kessler behind. This is the fun one. We continue to watch Herman and Alander. This may have to be settled by who has the fastest pit to stop. See those two, the car, the third in line, that's Sara Dub racing in the blackjack position. Only one lap down. If somebody has trouble ahead of her and she's able to vulture that spot, look for her to be on the pole. Well, soup. Oh, that was very close. Um, I have to disappoint you. Walter Lander is in pit lane right now. There we go. Nearly colliding with the pit wall itself, going a bit too deep there for his own liking. 
but was able to narrowly avoid said wall. I got a feeling that Alondra probably thought I'm faster than, than Herman here. I can't get around you. I'll do it this way. I'll come in, see if I can get some clear track in front of me. I'll run some fast laps and I'll, I'll do the undercut. The interesting race right now is between Rene Osterkamp in first and Charlie Summers in fifth. How is this a race, you might ask? Well, they were pretty close together when they made their pit stops. Summers, 22 and a half seconds behind Osterkamp. Well, I think it's going to be hard, Stefan, for Osterkamp to get in and out and not have Summers pass. Well, we shall find, we'll out, find out now as he dips into the pit lane. Perfect pit entry there from Rene, so let's see what he can do on his pit stop. As if they listen to the broadcast. All right, through the corkscrew is Summers through Rainy Curve. The right hander that is 10, and then the final sharp left hander, which is 11. And Summers is out on the straight. Sippel and Ryan uh, elected to drive past the pit lane for at least a little time. Ostercamp is rolling. Summers goes by, but remember it's a shorter trip through pit lane, but I don't think it's going to matter. Summers is going to have the lead. So right back the way it was before. Should be about one and a half seconds between the two right now. So about as much as they had between themselves. Interesting thing will be our new leader, Matthias Sipula. First of all, when does he pit? Say no for where will he come out when he pits? Absolutely, he was racing in third and pretty much, uh, pretty much by himself. Sipula right now has gone halfway. I guess he's hoping for some rain to come and they'll they'll call this race although i guess they would race these cars in the rain well for rain he can wait at least one okay. more year until rac <laughs> implements it stefan herman is in now this is interesting as is connor ryan now herman is the one we were looking at with Vitali and lander let's see where a lander just out of the parks for now this one's going to be close a lander through rainy down into 10. Herman in his he box. Goes. Herman is dropping now, is getting away off his pit stall, so this will be interesting. Over the start finish line, and he is now off his limiter, so the race is on. Boy, it takes so long to get going. Here comes a lander on the outside. Remember, though, it's an interesting pit exit here because it's a shorter distance. Oh, a lander with a there. mistake. But a lander will have the momentum, and he gets past Stephen Herman. And there's the pass made, the classic undercut. The launder could not get around Herman on the track. He comes in early, runs some hot laps, and gets it done. Pit stop time between the two in the box. Well, eh, looks like the lander was in there for just about the same amount of time. 28-2, 28-7. Matty Sippel has gone across pit entrance one more time, so he's going to stay out. Just under nine minutes of racing to go. Sippel can pit anytime he likes other than the white flag, and we've seen drivers forget to do that. He still has about eight and a half minutes to do his pit stop. Um, and as you said, as long as he doesn't forget about his pit stall stop, everything is good. That's, as Phil Reed is getting challenging yep. Josh Light now. Look at this, Reed's gonna get him, I think, on the outside. Powers by the top. Boy, we've seen these guys try this in different combinations. Look at that, Stefan Ladd holds him off. Around the outside is around the hard side right here. You have to be quite way in front here with the overlap to do something because you have to do the undercut into turn three to be able to uh, get this position that you want in this hairpin. Everybody has made a pit stop except for Matty Sipla. And all the drivers behind him, oh look at here, this is fun. The pit stops are done, the gloves are off. 
and this is big time for Phil Reed here for fourth position. He really wants it. What else is Josh Lett really wants that fourth position for himself too? You don't need to go there as if we report that Dominic Gatermeyer has moved up into 19th and the double in the Dosecki's position now. It's Alexei Slavrykin, the Russian driver. Put him on the pole. Sarah Dove outside looking in at 21st. Best battle on the track right now, Ladd and Reed. Meanwhile, Cinderella stays late at the ball. Matty Sipla still out there racing. Again, you gotta figure if Josh Ladd can get a better qualifying effort in as he started in ninth. He's gonna be really good next season. We'll see how his talents transfer over into whatever Formula No version they choose to race it right on board with the Reed. Yes, we have gotten noticed that they're either gonna choose uh, the Formula No 3.5 or the Formula 3 car, which kind of would be the uh, French equivalent that we're racing here uh, right now. Cipla is in. Cinderella does have a curfew. Oh, we had a car that was off there. That is Alexei Subrotkin oh. there. That might be what Sarah Dub was hoping for. He's going to bring the car back out. I think he's going to be able to limp that car home in the Dosecki's position. Sorry, Sarah. We're not going to cover that one. Let's go ahead and stay on Cipla right now and see if he can get out in front of Josh Ladd and Phil Reed. I don't know. No, they're, they're already sadly alongside. They are right now. Phil Reed and Josh Ladd into turn two, into turn three. They go. Yeah. And Josh Ladd once again able to defend off his fourth position. Sipla comes out in what I believe will be... No Man's Land. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's quite literally in No Man's Land, sitting right now in uh, 11th position. Now, in sixth position, it's Connor Ryan. He's just ahead of a nice little battle going on. Another driver we haven't talked much about who's really talented, Luke Barton, back there in seventh. A driver we have talked a lot about, Bataria Lander. The Lander has left Herman behind now and is now working on He's got two spots in front of him. He has got two spots in front of him, and he really wants to take them down. So with this going on, we really have two battles we're going to watch. We're going to watch Josh and Reed. Nothing going on there. The fun one right now is watching these guys work. The fun one is indeed right behind them for seventh position. That is overall. I can report that Soroykin has gone a lap down. He's in 20th. Sara Dove has made it up into 19th spot. She has managed to get into the uh, Dos Equis position, Dominic Gehrmeyer now in 21st, out of luck. As Gehrmeyer has left the system, so that was the attrition that those guys were looking for. Well, our battle of three has gone down to a battle of two for sixth position. Let's go to third right now because boy, Reed is all over the back of Josh Ladd. Oh, that's not the best racing line for both of those guys. A little target fixation going on from them. Well, target fixation, you say, but you can't see where you're going <laughs> in that turn. So, <laughs> That's a good the point. Best, the, the best bet always is to have your car lined up for the tr three trees that are right at the uh, corkscrew. If you're lined up with the middle one, you are good to go. Three minutes of racing to go. Ladd pulls away from Reed a bit. Kessler back in fifth without, not in striking distance. Let's go to Ryan because here comes Luke Barton. This is a battle for sixth. Barton looks quick. Barton looks quick. Ryan looks quick. Everyone looks quick. Who's going to get it? We don't know. We will see. We said passing is like melting a rooster. The hard part starts after you catch it, and right now Ryan is that rooster. 
Martin to see if he can get some milk out of it. They race for sixth position. They're looking at two. I got one eye on this battle. I got my other eye on the Lad Reed battle. All this going on as Charlie Summers goes under the start finish line with a minute, with two minutes and eight seconds of racing to go. This and one more lap for Summers. Well, if we will see something, we will see something on the very last lap. Actually, part Phil Reed made a little bit of a mistake in the second last turn, losing some ground on Shosh Lad. And here comes the for sixth position, I think, here. Barton taking a peek on the outside. They are side by side. Barton cannot get around Ryan. Gave it a stab. They are starting to get real racy with each other, but you have to be careful. As a ride blinks out there for me, um, Valtteri Lander just behind him. He is closing in once again. The Lander was able to run these two guys down. Again, we haven't seen the Lander be able to make a pass on the track. The pass we saw him make on Herman was done with the undercut. Look at Barton now working on Connor Ryan. That Ryan's blinking. Charlie Summer into corner 11. He'll get the white flag. He's got 1.6 seconds on Rene Osterkamp. Oh. That is Connor Ryan with the mistake out of the corkscrew. He touches. Oh, he touch. Everyone touches. Barton upside down. Kessler, sorry, Herman into the rear of Ryan. That started with, with Ryan getting in the back of Barton. Turning Barton over. Barton making the pass on the outside. Good job from Fatari Alander to get on the binders and, and avoid an incident there. If we have time, if we can go on board with Alander, uh, on board with Herman will be really good. He's, he's fourth to the scene. Somehow Alander got through, but nobody else did. We'll jump back and try. There we go. This will be fun. We have plenty of time as our leader is just working his way through the corkscrew now. Get to this incident. And there you see it happen. Whoa! And Herman has to go through. Meanwhile, we need to come back live here to Charlie Summers, who's out of 11. The feature race! The final round in the AOR Formula 0 2.0 Championship goes to Charlie Summers. Renee Osterkamp gets second. Josh Ladd holds off Reed for third. Kessler a quiet fifth position. A lander gets sixth. Now we go back to seventh. This is Tessier. We haven't heard much from him. Look at these guys trying to recover. This is Ryan and here comes Sipla. I think Sipla. Oh, oh did not realize that Ryan's car was injured. That was very close between Ryan and Sipola, but Ryan takes home eighth place. They start to heat up a little bit. There's a battle we didn't get to see. Herman, Lloyd Barbie. Barbie's going to make a move on, on, on Hoyman. But behind him, Knut Martinson tries to also get a chunk off him. Whoa, and nearly gets a chunk there of Hoyman. And then trying behind to get a side by side, Lloyd Barbie and Stefan Herman. Who is going to get that position? It goes to... It follows Barbie. Up. Hoyman, Martinson, Barbie, and, Hoyman, and Herman in that position. 17th, 18th, and 19th go to Edwards, Dove, and Sorokin. Uh-oh. Two laps down is Loic is Luke Barton. He's not gonna get the regrid. That's gonna go to Alexi Sorokin. Look for Sorokin inside of Dub. We'll go to the sprint race. The racing is over here in the feature. Don't go far though. This is a doubleheader event. And you know that the best part of any doubleheader is the break in between. The perfect blend of the post-race high and the pre-race jitters. We'll take a short break. We'll come back to talk to some of the drivers, run down the fire, entire finishing order before we get our ducks in a row for the sprint race. Don't go far.
Sanction by Apex Online Racing. You're watching the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the final round, round 12 of the Formula Renault 2.0 Season 11 Championship. It's a double header. The feature race is in the books. The sprint race is coming up. Let's give you the finishing order of the feature race that you just saw right now. Well, he qualified in third position. He got to the front quickly. We're talking about Charlie Summers. He held off Renee Osterkamp. Summers gets a nice feature race win. Renee Osterkamp will have to settle for second. The guy who really put on the show is Josh Ladd from ninth all the way up to third. Phil Reed could not get around him as he had to settle for fourth. Patrick Kessler rounds out your top five. The back half of your top ten, Vitaria Lander sit back there, watch some incidents happen in front of him as he gets sixth position. Alain Tessier did not see much of him as he gets seventh. Connor Ryan, Maddie Sipla qualified fourth, was racing up front for a while, ran into trouble. He has to settle for ninth. Lubomir Morris in tenth. Stefan? Hellister A finishes in 11th. Daniel J. Morris 12th. Tom von Hoyman, as we saw, finishing 13th. Knut von Martinsen. Uh, Knut Martinsen, not von Martinsen. 14th. Lloyd Barbie, 15th. Just about able to snatch his 15th position from Stefan Herman, the last car being on the lead lap. Tom Edwards, 17th. Azar 18th. Alexis Rodkin, 19th. And Luke Barton, two laps down already, 20th. Then in the blackjack position, it's Evan uh, Emery who ran into trouble. Dominic Gatermeyer, who was in position to be on the front row of the sprint race, he finishes in 22nd. Urka Lindstrom, David Santana, Matty Coppola rounds out your 25 car field. Interesting enough, it is going to be Alexi Soroykin in the 19th position that's going to start on the pole. But outside of him, and I think we're going to be able to talk to her, is Sara Dove, as she's going to be starting outside of row one. Sara, it's Soup here. We've been watching you. For most of the race, you were in 21st position. I didn't think you were going to get the regrid. Then we had some attrition in front of you, and sure enough, you're going to be on the front row. Yeah, um, I was getting a bit worried. Uh, well, I had, I think I had all my spins at the start, so that left everyone else to have their spins at the end. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the future. You've really started to get the feel of this Formula Renault 2.0, and now they're going to switch it up to you. Any reservations about uh, starting to have to learn a new car all over again? No, I don't like this car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it, yeah I, I'm glad we're switching because, yeah, I kind of kind of got over this car now, by now. Good riddance is what she says. All right, Sara, you're going to start on the outside of row one. Let's see what you can do in the sprint race. Okay, thank you. She's always fun to watch. She's a tough racer. She'll fend off that position. All right, Stefan, who you got? Well, I'm here with our very unlucky Luke Barton having a great race, finishing for a top five position. And then the wreck happened, sadly. Luke Talk us through your incident right there at the end. Uh, yeah, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Wonderful. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't know whether... I, I, I think Connor should have yielded that corner after his mistake out of the corkscrew. But um, it was just the slightest of touches. But uh, as I locked up to try and recover it, uh, collected Connor. It's a shame because I think it was like the last lap or the second to last lap. I'm not sure. But... Uh, yeah, it was, it was a shame as well because uh, I had a really good pace. Um, I think I was second in practice and I was able to do um, 16 eights on race pace. So I thought if I, like after my incident at the beginning, I just uh, I think I got a little bit loose coming out of the, the fast left hander. I'm not sure what it's called, but I uh, just ended up hitting the barrier. Luckily, it was just some wing damage. So I was able to just load up with fuel and get my head down and uh, it paid off. Like I was, I was up into fifth or sixth. Um, it was just tricky getting past Connor. Um, I, I started to actually just stare at Connor's rear and uh, sort of match his pace, unfortunately. But yeah, this this is an incident. It happens. Um, I, don't, I don't know whether to risk it in front of the stewards because I know I'm on probation, and if I get deemed not to have left enough room or something, then uh, I'll probably get a penalty. So let's see. Well, quick question, quick answer. Will you come back for season 12 now that we're stepping away from the former Renault 2.0? I cannot wait. Uh, I'm really looking forward <laughs> to getting in a different... 
<laughs> well, look, Barton, I think you're going to be on the pole for the next race. So good luck to you in the sprint race. And Soup, a very unlucky Barton right there. Yeah, actually, Barton being two laps down, you have to be no more than one lap down. So Luke's ah. not going to get that. It's going to go to Alex Sorokin. With that said, we're going to take a short break. Don't go far, though, because the sprint race, if you haven't seen one of those, boy, you don't want to miss it. Back in a few.
You're you. We're us. The Global Sim Racing Channel. And this is the AOR Formula Renault 2.0 Season 11 Championship. The final round. The final event as the feature is already in the books. Now we turn our attention to the always exciting second half of the doubleheader, the sprint race. And here to tell us about that is going to be Stefan Slocker. Stefan, what's in score? Well, as you said, it's the sprint race time. 25 minutes full, low, fast and furious. Grid inverted top 20 unless you're two, more than two laps down. So that means Luke Barton, he's not our pole sitter. He's starting 20th. Pit stop, zero. We will not have any pit stops to worry about. Incident cap, short race. A little bit less on the incident cap. 13x, but nobody will run into that problem for the win. Once again, shorter race, less points for the win. We get 20 and it only pays to 16. Now, best on, based on reputation, the two drivers that would be favored to win this would be Alexi Soroykin, who's going to be starting on the pole, and Stefan Herman, who will be starting outside of row two. But honestly, Stefan, from what we saw from both of those guys, they didn't feel very comfortable up there. So it's really anybody's guess who's going to get this one. It's a long way back till we get to the guys who are fast, like uh, Summers and Osterkamp. Well, I'm going to be quite honest here. If Summers and Osterkamp are able to get through the field quickly, they will storm away once again with the lead. They're just that much faster here today that nobody, if they can get up to the front quick enough, will be able to challenge them for the lead. However, inverted grid they will have to fight through that so we will see a very great race for them because they have to fight through all of it oh the action corner early on is going to be the andretti hairpin you're going to have a lot of drivers that don't have the pace getting there first a lot of drivers with a lot of pace getting there much later a lot of passing going to be done early the smart drivers who've been around for a while know that you don't have to do it all in the first lap even though there's only 25 minutes of racing. Still plenty of time if you're patient to get the job done. It will be fun. You don't want to miss it. Going to wrap up Season 11. GSRC has been here for so many of them. We hope to be back for Season 12. Well, one quick quick thing about the Mario Andretti hairpin. It is, thankfully, in the middle, wide enough that you can go four, maybe even five wide with these cars. So there will hopefully be no problems right there. But yeah, as you said, it's just an incredible journey that GSC was able to be part of up until this point, and we will hopefully look into a very great season 12 with you in the near future. Both you and I were kind of laughed a little bit when we interviewed the drivers about, uh, you know, if they were a little hesitant to change cars. <laughs> Both uh, Luke Barden and Sara Dove seemed like they couldn't get out of the cockpit of the formula 2.0 fast enough there give me anything other than what we're racing it you know as they always say new is always better and be careful what you wish for the old the grass is always <laughs> greener on the other side of the fence well we'll see it'll be fun certainly the i think this car has served the series well it has been put on some pretty good racing and uh, look for it to still be around on other gsrc broadcast still part of the absolute beginner league the race is on sunday no news from them about them switching well it most definitely will be interesting because as uh, you said uh, we are getting some new cars and one of the new cast cars that we will get is quite similar to this one obviously being the formula 3 car um, so yeah it will be interesting what maybe other leagues will decide on doing with the current Formula Renault 2.0. So for newcomers that aren't aware, is, is 3 faster than 2? Is that how that works? Uh, not quite. The Formula Renault 2.0 is pretty much the French uh, copy pasta of the Formula Renault of, of the Formula 3 car. And the Formula Renault 3.5 is technically somewhat similar to uh, Formula 2 the regulations of the 2014 era, I think. Got it. Well, it'll be fun to see how it plays out. It's usually been my impression that if you're fast in a in a shopping cart, 
you're going to be fast in a Ferrari. As we look at, that looks like, was that Rene Osterkamp there? Good to tell that yellow car is either Osterkamp or Kessler. Spinning around. There is no qualifying. It's just uh, warming up right now. Everybody getting used to how it plays out. The, the weather carries over the exactly the same weather that we raced before. Although I must admit, it does seem a little less overcast, but maybe it's just me getting used to the gloom. That is just you there, Bill. It's the exact same weather. That makes sense. There actually, it's not the exact same weather. We actually have one degree more on See? the track temperature. <laughs> I knew I could tell I'm that attuned to the iron racing platform. I could feel it from here in my booth. All right, qualifying. Well, not qualifying. Practice is done. So as soon as iRacing populates the grid, we'll give it to you right now. Here we go on the front row. Alexi Sorokin and Sara Dove. Row two, Tom Edwards, Stefan Herman. Watch out for him. He's a threat. Loic Barbie and the Orange Viking, Knut Martins, came are in sixth position. Tom Van Hoyman, Daniel Morris, maybe a threat in eighth. Ali Hay, another guy who could be quick in ninth. Lubomir Morris in tenth. Who knows? Okay, Steph. Conor Ryan in 11th, Alain Tessier in 12th, Votriel Lander in 13th, Patrick Hessel 14th, Phil Reed rounding out your top 15, Rene Osterkamp uh, 16th, uh, 17th, Charlie Summers, our winner of the feature race, Luke Barton not being able to get into uh, the first place here, in 18th, Evan uh, Emre in 19th, Dominic Garamay in 20th. Go down into 21st, Erica Lindstrom, Matteo Coppola, Matty Sipola, and then for some reason, Josh Ladd down there in the 24th position, maybe serving a penalty from a previous event. For the final time ever, the engines harmonize, gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows, the horses are out of the barn, and it is a Russian stallion, Alexei Sorokin, leading the stampede down into the Andretti hairpin. Here they come. Sara Dove on the outside already picking up a spot. That is, well, Herman, uh, Herman looking to get that spot. No, he holds it off in fourth. Edwards in third. Everything behind so far, so clean and no trouble for our winners of the feature race as everything in the top that is about seven are already single file. The leaders start to spread out. So Rake and Dove, Edwards, Herman and Barbie. All the way back to sixth position, the orange Mike Kmart. He's got a nice gap before anybody gets to him. Tom Van Hoyen, second final so far. Oh my goodness, back in 14th, they are three wide. Oh, oh no, there's a spin, a big one. What? How did... How did Alander avoid that? Go. There it is. And now we come back. We saw that. So what happens? Sorokin's still out in front. Dove holding on to second. Herman really has no luck with that second last turn. Once again, getting collected right there. I'm gonna take a look at one more time, Stefan. Yes, can we please go on board with a lander? That is a scary moment for a racer. That's him making the pit stop. We're going to have to jump back a little bit farther there to see that one. Here we go. Now we'll get it. Not on board with a lander, though I don't believe. And we came close to getting that one. One more try at it. Now we're going to get it. And there you can see it, Netcode. Thank you for Netcode. <laughs> Otherwise... Oh, Sara Dove makes a mistake from second position as we speak. She loses it. Everybody goes around. That was in the court. Racing in second position. She's going to surrender all those spots. He was chasing Sorokin. One more time, now we're gonna find it. There's Dove down the corkscrew. This comes around on her, and I think she finds the wall. There it is. 
So a dub out of the way, that moves the Orange Viking. Kmart up into seventh. Look, Barbie, you wanted a big name, you wanted somebody to get up there. How about Phil Reed now in fourth? Up 11 spots. Well, Phil Reed already in fourth. Uh, Charlie Summers and Renia Osterkamp still struggling in 11th and 12th right now, only making up five positions from their starting place so far. We're gonna take a look at that right now. There they are. But both of these guys have the pace. If they, what you talked about, is just a matter of getting around. They are very patient. in the sixth spot. This is uh, Lubomir Morris taking a peek on the out inside is Tom Van Hoyman. Morris now in the preferred position. Oh, behind him. The... Oh, that's Charlie Summers getting collected there. It started with Luke Bar Barton getting around in front of him. Yes, yeah, Barton got collected there by Daniel Che Morris. And then Barton sitting in the middle of the track, staying on the front, accelerated into Charlie Summers. Summers will not be a happy fellow after this one. Morris gave a little bit of a punt. You're looking at Summers now. What will happen is Morris comes up on the inside, turns him around. This will happen on the final corner. And then Summers, as he goes around, he collects them. That's going to be a rough day for Summers. There you see Morris getting together. Charlie has nowhere to go. Oh! We come back live. All this going on behind Alexi Soroyka now, who's opened up a 1.8 second lead on Knut Martinson. Reed has worked his way around Luke. Lloyd Barbie now is up into third. Next on his hit list, Stefan is Kmart. As Ryan, them, Ryan tries to overtake Barbie, um, but once again not able to succeed because of the nature that is turn 2 and 3, also known as the Andre the Airpin. But yeah, as you said, Phil Reed already up into third place. He is right now the man to beat. Uh, two more guys and he gets the win, but obviously the faster or the more uh, up on the positions he goes, the faster the people around him get, and the harder the overtaking gets. Let's go ahead and check in on seventh position. These are the Sim RC boys trying to work their way through. Kat Kessler in seventh. Ostercap now has got around Ben Hoyman. So they race in seventh and eighth. They are coming. With Summers out of the mix, really it's Ostercamp's race. If he can get through it, see if he can run down the guys in front. Well, at this point, I think that Phil Reed is already out of reach yep. for Ostercamp. Perhaps. Let's go to second. Here comes Reed. He gets a good run out of 11 as he's following Knut Martinson now. Martinson, good job to Ben Lock Reed. Reed with the momentum. Let's see what type of line Martinson takes into the end. Ready, head pin? Just a normal racing line. Reed's gonna have to wait. Reed is going to have to wait, but uh, if it goes by his plans, then he will not have to wait much longer. So the question is, if Reed is maybe the fastest of those three cars, the longer he stays behind Martinson, the better chance it is for these guys like uh, Kessler and Ostrakin. Like you said, they are so fast. Seven seconds behind the leader. Yes, this is the biggest problem that they, uh, those two face right now. They are already, as you said, seven seconds behind, so this can uh, have a big impact on how Phil Reed is able to plan his race from here on out. Because um, obviously, also, um, Sirotkin, it's their race to lose right now. Alexei Sirotkin, right now, Kmart's biggest fan is the Russian. So Rick is saying, hold him up, Knut. Oh, I don't know if he's going to do this time. As Knut's a little loose coming out of the final corner, that's going to open the door for Phil Reed. Reed gets to the inside. He's not going to lead 
to the start finish line, but the time they get done with the end for the airpin, Phil Reed's gonna be in second. Well, to be fair, Sirotkin is uh, not a fan of either of them because they're both faster than him. <laughs> the gaps, 1.4 seconds from the leader back to Reed now. But yeah, now it really is first race to lose. He is just, as he said, one and a half seconds behind and he is faster by about half a second a lap. I remember Reed would have been fast in the feature race other than he made that mistake on the first lap that put him so far back. He worked all the way through the field to get that good finish. Looking at Phil Reed right there. Things settling down a little bit now. What's happened, Stefan, is the faster cars have all found their place and, and everyone seems to be in their normal racing position. Drop in on fifth position, Loic Barbie. Doing a good job of holding station. That's right where he started. I think Lubomir Morris is going to be quicker. They're coming. Kessler and Osterkamp coming as well. Everyone is coming at oh. everyone else pretty much. That is the state of this race right now. Last lap, Phil Reed, 4 tenths faster than your current leader, I'd say, Sirotkin. Just ahead of these guys. Don't mean to bounce you around too much, but Knut Martin is about to lose a spot to Conor Ryan. Yeah, Conor Ryan last lap about 1.2 seconds faster than Knut. That is obviously worth the overtake of Phil Reed on Knut here. So that is obviously not their true speed, but Conor Ryan, you can see it, he is faster than Knut and he wants that podium. Right on the nose, on the uh, nose of Ryan's car. Trying to make that gap up. I got one eye on the Soroykin Reed thing, and boy, Reed is just closing in so fast that I honestly think maybe Direct we might need to go there right now because the gap, the Reed, the, the interval, the Reed is closing. It's going to happen quick. It is gonna happen quick and it's not gonna hurt Sirotkin, no. trust me. If Reed wants to get by you, he's gonna find a way yeah. by you. And if he has to push you into a mistake, he is gonna get in that position. It is his Reed knows he has a nice cushion back there. And he's quick enough that he really doesn't have to worry about being ran down by the big things like Sit back here. Let's see. Let's watch a little bit of racecraft from Phil Reed, the veteran. See what he can do on a Sorokin. They come up into the scary corner number six. This is not where you want to go too wide. That's the corner that got Reed early in, in the feature race where he went too wide there, went off in the sand. Down into the corkscrew. Speaking about being uh, Kessler is right now trying to overtake Lloyd Barbie here into the corkscrew. Side by side, oh. they go. Oh, and the oh, touch! The two teammates of CMRC touch and Osterkam loses a position. Osterkam got punched in the gearbox by Matty Sipla. That's why he went around. Ah, there we go. So, chain reaction there, but a perfect 360 from Rene Osterkam only losing the position to Sipla. Why don't we I stay guess. on this replay here, and why don't we go up to the front? As you're going to see the attempted pass, we'll go right up to the leader to Phil Reed. Because as this is going on, you'll see Phil Reed coming out of uh, out of here. There's Sorokin, our leader. And Reed makes a stab at him. And I really thought he was going to get it done, but look at Sorokin fend off. The fight for P3 is right now on between Ryan and Martinson. They are side by side through the last two turns already. Ryan with the outside here has to give way to Martinson, but he has now a run up onto the... And the leader is also side by side here. Jesus. Yeah, and Reed gets the pass made into the corkscrew. Martinson, Ryan goes off in the corkscrew. So as that's going on, Martinson able to hold on to the position. But a new leader, Phil Reed. We knew it was coming. It took him a while to get there. 
And now Phil can drive away. Let's go ahead and look and read make this pass on uh, Sorokin. It's in the corkscrew, I believe. Yes, both passes right into the corkscrew. Reed gets alongside, and then from then on, it was just a matter of keeping the cars out of each other. And now nice. the AOR Orange driver can drive away. He's opened up one second on Soroykin. Martinson in third. Ostercap out of the mix now as we're going to look there at there's Canute. Now, now remember, we look at this battle. This was Kessler, Sipola, and Ostercap was in this mix as well. Sipola got into the gearbox of Ostercap. That took care of Rene. Well, now he's got a similar paint car in front of him. Let's see if he tries it again. Speaking about Rene, he just tried to overtake Loic Barbet into the uh, Cox group, but thought better of it. But yeah, this this has once again turned this race a bit upside down. Um, yep. But it's only good for us as, by the way, Morich is now trying to overtake Martinson into turn two. Tries to lay the lunch there into the Mario Andretti hairpin, stays side by side with him, but not enough traction on the outside and has to give up the fight for P3 once again. I'll tell you, Martinson's fending off who's ever coming. He held off uh, he held off Connor Ryan and now he's trying to hold off Lubomir Morris. The newt is back, started third, racing in third. Here comes a run, though, from Luke Morris. Now he pulls around, but he can't do it around the outside of six. We know that. With a run up the hill. Here we go. Martinson taking the inside through the to the corkscrew. But because it goes left-right, he has to give it back. And now I think he gets it. Luke Morris up in the Yes, if you can hold it through the first part on the outside through the corkscrew, you're actually gonna get a bit of a boost, so to speak, through the second part of the hairpin because you kind of have to lift a little bit um, on the outside. But Patrick Kessler is right now trying to overtake Knut Martinsen. That is now for fourth position. Yep, things go on south for the for the Orange Viking as actually Connor Ryan got through as well. So Kessler now, this is a battle for fifth as Martinson loses a spot to Kessler, Ryan, and Morris all on the same lap. And Sipola. not over left. That's there goes Sipola. Yikes. Uh, this is one race to forget right now for Knut Martinson going from third to seventh. He's doing so well, but it just uh, all slipped away from him there. So who is faster of these guys? Well, I think Lubomir Morris is pretty quick. Ryan following. I think Kessler may be the best out of the group, at least on reputation. Speaking about Kessler, he is yeah. not coming. But yeah, one thing we also can say for Knut Martinson, sadly, is that he will not stay much long in this seventh position, as behind him, Lene Osterkamp is closing in very very, very fast. Okay. But it's one of the beauties, it's one of the dynamics of the sprint race, that it gets drivers up there, they get to show what they can do. We didn't, we didn't enjoy watching the new show us racecraft. Show us racecraft, show us your will and spirit to <laughs> defend your position. Well, let's see what Canute can do, as here comes Rene Ostercamp. I don't know what you can do with a three-time champion that's running you down other than just hold the race alive. And... Sipla very wide there on the exit of turn five, going all sideways through the gravel there, and luckily able to keep it together. It oh, here it comes. oh, not this time! Right in front, Ooh. and how about an onboard from Rene Ocean Camp if we get a chance? 
Holy smokes! How do you become a three-time champion? This is how you do it. Oh, what a great job, Ray. Watch Renee. You be the driver here on this one. Go right, go left. Renee says, I'm going underneath. Whee! Yes, very good call there from Osterkamp, saving his sprint race as of right now. But Knut Martinson, he lines up to lose, sadly, another position for him and his fans. But Osterkamp, way too fast for Martinson as of right now. Into turn two they go, and Ren Osterkamp has cleared him already by turn three. But with the Cipolla spin, Martinson kind of holds position because he was able to vulture with the Cipolla spot. All right, Lubomir Morris, once he got around uh, Kmart, he's trying to run away with it. Connor Ryan having none of that. Uh-oh, here comes Kessler. Ryan goes wide, Kessler with momentum. And you just can't make a mistake in front of the defending champion as Kessler picks up fourth position. Well, the thing is, these three guys, they are all quite a bit faster, about half a second than Alexei Sirotkin. Sirotkin, obviously, still quite a lot slower. And then Phil Reed said half a second, right about there. So, as of right now, these three guys that we are following right now are not faster than our leader. If you think Phil Reed has it locked up, oh, you haven't watched an AOR event, you never know what's going to happen. Stick around for these final five minutes. The question now is, can Sorokin hang on to second? Lubomir Morris started to pull away from Kessler now. Let's see if Morris can get up there to Sorokin. As we yeah, we're looking at the Russian driver racing in second. Six seconds behind Reed, one and a half seconds ahead of the driver out of the Czech Republic, Lubomir Morris. In fact, they are big, teammates. The big question I just wanted to talk about, I think, big question will be, is Morris going to pull team orders on yeah. Sorokin? Sorokin not in the point race battle. Morris sitting on that top five overlay with chances. We talked about it maybe getting to Kessler, although Kessler's having a pretty good day. Not sure if Kessler's going to open up any opportunities for Morris to get that second spot. As you can hear the bells of the local mission going on behind. Well, I can tell you something sad, though we are, have lost so far seven cars in this race. Um, so, seven cars finding a very early season, uh, end to their season as of right now. Here's a driver I just can't get a handle on. It's Loic Barbie. We have seen him be really impressive. And then I'll sometimes just be a mid pack racer. Right now, he's ahead of Matty Sipla. Another driver that can be hot and cold. This battle is for ninth position, and Sipla's going to make quick work of Barbie. up into ninth. He can be hot and cold at times, but this time he was very hot going past a Loic Barbe there for ninth position. Don't need to go there. Last car in the points paying position, Charlie Summers. First car one lap down, racing in 16th. Not only first car one lap down, but he is also sadly the last car still on <laughs> the track. Well, we, I have to say, we're, we, there's also Sarah Dove still on the racetrack, technically, but he is, but she is stuck at the turn four barrier for quite some time already. Sarah, not giving up the go. She's going to finish the race on the track. All this going on behind Phil Reed. Two minutes and 13 seconds mark away from closing out the season with a win.
Phil Reed has been along around for a long time. He was here back in the days when they raced the Pro Monster. He has a championship in the Pro Monster. Does not have such a championship in the 11 seasons that they raced in this Formula Renault. Well, Bill, I'm going to tell you something. We have to go back to P2 now Woo! as Sirotkin is actually letting past Lubomir Morris. So what I thought might happen has happened and he's fighting quite hard now against Patrick Kessler. Yay! He, up. he left the teammate by, but he didn't want to let Kessler by. He just says, all right. So basically, everything stays the same for Morris. Kessler now up into third. So Reichen fighting back, working hard. I also can report that Matti Sipola, he has retired his car and it looks like that he ran out of incident points because he suddenly vanished on track. Truly a world championship as your leader hails out of the UK. The driver in second out of the Czech Republic, Kessler. Out of Switzerland, Sorokin, the Russian driver, Rene Osterkamp out of Germany. Top five, five different countries. That's what we like to see. Top five, five different countries and five different mate. No, wait, it's one car. <laughs> Coming across, Phil Reed gets the flag that has no pigment. The, what's scaring me about Phil Reed is that he is uh, having internet connection problems. Phil, you got a seven and a half second lead. I don't think going slow makes any difference on your connection. Maybe, maybe you better go fast. Make sure you get to the finish line before you lose connection. Yes, give the hamster a little bit more carrots and he is going to go faster in his wheel. Look at Ostercamp back here working on Sorokin. And I, Renee's going to want to... Boy, if you're a champion, you just want the spot, even though it is meaningless right now. Renee just wants to finish out the season with a pass. He ducks down on the inside of five. Not going to work. He'll have to wait, see if he does it up into the corkscrew. Meanwhile, our leader, Phil Reed, go into the corkscrew right now. He, go, he goes left. He goes right now through the sweeping rainy curve. Two quarters left. Corner number 10, the right-hander, and then the final corner number 11. And he will put the final chapter in the books of the Apex Online Racing's Formula Season 11 Championship as Phil Reed wins the sprint race. Lubomir Morris is going to fend off Patrick Kessler for second. Sorokin, though. Ostercamp is going to get the best as he gets around the Russian driver. So Rankin will have to settle for fifth. Kmart gets six. Connor Ryan gets seventh. Ben Hoyman, Barbie, Emre, Alexander Morris, Lindstrom, Luke Barton. The final 14 cars on the lead lap. Charlie Summer and Matty Suppler get the final points paying positions. Well, the racing is over completely here at Laguna Seca, but you know how this works. We'll take a short break. We'll be back to talk to the drivers for one final time this season before we put a lock on the gate. Don't go far.
This is GSRC. That stands for the Global Sim Racing Channel. You're watching the AOR. That stands for Apex Online Racing. It's the Formula Renault 2.0 League Championship Season number 11. We are done. The feature and the sprint are in the books. Let's give you the finishing order of the sprint race right now. He started in 15th position, worked us all the way up to the front, and we're talking about Bill Lee, the veteran. Lubomir Morris settles for second. Patrick Kessler follows him around in third. We don't think there was enough point gap there for much to change in the point standings. Your three-time champion, Renee Osterkamp, and this season champion in fourth position. Alessi Sorenka did a good job of leading for a while. He has to come home in fifth. Back after your top ten, well, that's led by George Bike and Kmart. Connor Ryan, Tom Van Hoyman, Lloyd Barbie, and rounding out your top ten, Evan Emery. Stefan? Walter Lander finishing in 11th. Daniel J. Morris, 12th. Luke Barton, 13th. Erica Lindstrom, 14th. Charlie Summers, the first car, one lap down, 15th. And he nearly wants the last car to finish. Matty Sipala, 16th. Dominic Edermeyer, 17th. They both did not finish, but Sarah Dove did in 18th. 11 laps down. Matthew Capola, Neri in 19th. Tom Edwards, 20th. And I'm just going to finish this. Alistair Hay, 21st. Uh, Alan Tissier, 22nd. Josh Light, 23rd. And Stefan Herman, the last car in 24th. Okay, it's time for interviews, and it looks like they're going to let us talk to our sprint race winner, Phil Reed. Phil, that's the way you want to polish off the Formula of Renault 2.0 there with a win in the sprint race to close the book on the car. Yep, that's pretty much uh, all I could hope for. I knew the feature race was going to be tough, and I mean, I, I toughed it out as much as I could. I thought I was pretty, pretty happy with my result there. But yeah, taking the win here is pretty much exactly how... I wanted it all to end. Uh, great start to 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 the race. Just absolutely jumped through on the first corner, and then it was pretty okay from there. Let's talk about the feature race where you were really quick, but you got caught. I think it was quarter six that you were caught on the outside and uh, ended up in the sand, lost a lot of spots. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, it's long time ago, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I tried it. I thought, you know, I might as well go for it. You know, it's the final race of the season. I'm thinking, you know, if if I could get past here, I might have a chance. But uh, so I gave it everything, and unfortunately, I had to drop back in time. Uh, luckily, I made up a few more positions back after that. I couldn't get quite get past Josh though. He had really good pace. Um, so that was uh, unfortunate for me. But I, you know, I really wanted that podium. But yeah, good race though. Still. I thought the Formula Renault 2.0 put on a good show for the 11 seasons that we had it. Are you looking forward to the new car? Or are you a little scared of it? Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, first of all, the Formula Renault has been good. I know it's been a problem for some people. Um, just, I think just the length of it, 11 seasons, that's almost yep. pretty much three years. So it's been a long time running to run the same car, uh, especially when it is like the style that it is. So moving on to a new car uh we we're just looking forward to the challenge because i mean whether does it, we're at a situation though we're at crossroads we're still not 100 percent sure which car we're going to be going with <laughs> we might go I mean, we're in a situation we might go with one might go with the other hell might just go both we don't know we're, not, we're still not 100 percent sure yet so we'll we've got a lot of that to do over the next few days uh get it all sorted but uh yeah right now i'm thinking in my head we might do like an alternating mini season between the two so we run both um but we'll see Get a, get a feel for how it works exactly before you, exactly before you commit gonna date around a little bit before yeah yeah like, exactly give us right our day. fan base <laughs> okay. give us a fan base and try and build it up and then uh and then go from there to the proper season seeing which cars best so we don't know well you guys one thing i know for certain you guys will figure it out because you're in a good league so good luck the rest of the way congratulations on the win to close it out and we'll look forward to seeing whatever direction you appreciate it. thank you very much Phil Reed, our sprint race winner today, and he's going to finish in the top five in the driver standings. Stefan, who you got? Well, I'm here with Evan R.T. Imre. Um, quite an unspectacular race day for you today. How did it feel to you, those last two races in the former No. 2.0? <laughs> well, um, in the first race, I, I, was go I, was going, I was going okay, and then I ran into the back of Dominic, and then um, you might have seen me a few times in the first race, just trying to, f uh, just trying to continue my finishing streak of uh, forty races. 
I wish I did. I, got, I was only only ended up about four laps down in the first race, and then sprint race. Um, I spun. I didn't hit anybody though, but I um, got got back up to tenth. So, uh, yeah, that's it. It's that's a Formula Renault all, all over. It's uh, quite emotional actually. That uh, <laughs> moving on to a new car. <laughs> Yeah, 11 season in one car is a very long time, as Phil Reader has said. How do you feel about the departure of the Formula 0 2.0 from Apex Online Racing? Well, the Formula 0 2.0 has produced some amazing races in the league. Um, for me, I was, I've, it's, a, it's the only car I've been good at for the past two years. And so I've just continued <laughs> to race it. Um, I've I've nearly won a race in it, but I bowled I bowled it in Interlagos season five. Uh, this uh, I'm still yet to win a race in this league. Maybe it'll happen in the Formula Three car, <laughs> but uh, it's it's been a roller coaster of uh, emotions. But um, it's it served the league very well after five seasons of Pro Mazda, and then we had we well Iris and hadn't released a single seater car for ages until. Until now, so um, everyone's excited to move on to this new car, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the future now. Yeah, before we release you back into the wild, anyone you want to thank for this amazing season? Well, I thank my teammates. It's been uh, we've just come to the end of the first year almost, the uh, team AOR, and. Uh, Teammates have been very good at setting up the car and all that. And of course, we've got sponsors, Frostmaster, Hype Energy, Elgato, um, and GT Omega. But it's, it's yeah, um, very proud of my team. Well, everyone, that was Evan Imre for you, your 10th place finisher in the very last race of this season. Soup, who you got? Could not be a more appropriate driver to talk to than the Orange Viking himself, Knut Martinson. Kmart, boy, it was fun to watch your race. And good to have you talk here as we close out Season 11. Uh, good to have you back. Thank you. Yeah, I thought I have had to be here for the final race in, in this car, which I've done so many races in throughout the last few years. Um, so it was only it was only fitting that I, uh, <laughs> I returned, I, I felt, um, after a few seasons, obviously. Um, and, yeah, it was... It was uh, it's a good night to end it on. 15th place, kind of average, I guess you can say. And then 6th uh, place, I was I was hoping to hold on for a podium there <laughs> in that final one. It would have been a nice way to go out, but... Um, oh, when, they, when, they, when they started to come, they came fast on you, boy. They ganged up on you. Yeah, they really did. I mean, I, I thought, like, when I, when I had... Um, I can't even remember who was the first one to pass me, was it? Uh, I think Morris got you. And then Morris, passed, yeah, yeah, first one. Um, and the kind of Ryan, I was defending from him for a while, uh, but yeah, suddenly <laughs> there was a massive train behind me, and I just uh, fell through. Luckily, a few of them made mistakes later, which gave me a few other places back. But uh, yeah, I, ha I had some good fun for uh, the final race in the car. And um, now that there are two new cars coming out, obviously we're still to figure out which of the F3 or the Formula 3.5 we're going to next. But um, I'm, 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 I'm sort of, my motivation is back up to get back into the open wheelers, having done mostly GTE uh, recently. Oh, here we go. Sorry, I had a little bit of a lost connection. <laughs> All right, got it. All right, sorry. Uh, Knut, thanks a lot for joining us, and good luck the rest of the way, man. We'll see you down the road. Yeah, no worries. And uh, cheers to you guys for hosting the race. Cheers for, to Phil, especially, who's been coordinating this league throughout all these years. I think it was uh, spring of 2016 we started with the Formula Renault 2.0. Uh, obviously, having started with the Promaster before that in late 2014. So it's been a good run. And uh, now let's see what the future, future will bring. Yep, it is time indeed. Congratulations. Good performance today from the Orange Viking, Knut Martinson. All right, one last interview before we lock it up for the whole season. Stefan, who you Yes, we have caught up here with Tom von Hoyman, your 8th place finisher of today, only losing a single position throughout this race. Tom, um, also a bit of an um, unspectacular race for you, just like Evan Imre had. Talk us through your last day of Formula 0 2.0 racing in the Apex Online Racing League. 
Yeah, it was a it was a really good day for me. Um, P13 to hold on to that. Um, in the future race was uh, was quite a little bit lucky as well. I didn't got that amount of pace. Uh, I got a consistency, not that amount of pace. Um, in the future race, and I got a broken front wing. I got um, Stefan Herman needed to pit the last lap. I got Loic behind me and Knut as well. So I really tried. <laughs> To defend, them, uh, to defend them off and I did so uh, I was r really happy with that and I didn't know what to expect with the sprint race because I was P7 and there was an accident behind me right behind me and I was the last car on, on the group of the first group and everybody from the faster guys was already behind me so I was like oh no we were going again you know getting uh, overtaken like I'm standing still so I was <laughs> like oh no um, but yeah um, I could uh, Hold on, um, Loic, I think he got a broken front wing or something because I was catching him really fast, so I overtook him. And after that he got into a battle with Daniel and Matty. Matty uh, disconnected after a while, I don't know why. Um, so that took the pressure off and uh, cruised home to P8, and uh, P8 is a really good position for me. So um, I can tell you Matty ran out of incidents on his race, so that's why he suddenly disconnected in front oh. of you. All right. I get um, it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, how do you feel about the departure of the Formula no 2 Mano? Um, yeah, I really love the car. Um, I've raced for it in five seasons with AOR. Um, I'm getting uh, quicker and consistent more. Um, so um, I'm really excited for the two new cars that are coming. Um, but for me, it's always like I need to um, start really at the back with a new car to get um, up to the pace that I'm, I'm right now, um, like with the Formula Renault uh, 2.0. So um, it's going to take a while, I think, for me to get used to the to the new two new cars. But yeah, I really love the Formula Renault. It's my favorite car. Well, some will love the departure. Some will hate the departure. Some are very sad. Some are very happy. I know that we will miss this season 11 of AOR Racing very much. Everyone, that was Tom van Hoyman, your 8th place finisher of today. And Soup, I think we can, I can say for everyone here at GSRC, we will miss AOR season 11 quite heavily. Absolutely. And we'd like to thank everybody at Apex Online Racing for organizing the Formula O 2.0 League and all the members who support the broadcast. How about the company's equipment and software that you see on the screen right now that we use to stream cyberspace into your place? The original music comes courtesy of Eric Eckelm and June Lalonde. See the screen to how to contact each of them. GSRC was pleased to bring you season opener to season finale coverage of the AOR Formula O 2.0 Season 11 Championship. If asked to do it again next season, GSRC would be honored to do so. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, visit GlobalSimRacingChannel.com or you can click on some of our social media options. Let's try Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at GlobalSimRacingChannel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Hey, don't forget to head over to our YouTube page and hit that big red subscribe button as well so you don't miss a moment here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Finally, on behalf of the crew, Stefan, Sean, and Dougie, I'd like to thank all of you for watching as Charlie Summers wins the feature and Phil Reed wins the sprint here in Laguna Seca. And congratulations to the Seed 11 driver champ, that's Renee Ostercamp, and his team, Sim RC. Happy holidays and special mention to all the children of the Netherlands. Here's hoping Cinder Claus and his partner in crime, Black Pete, don't hit you with the stick, stuff you in a burlap bag, and kidnap you away to Spain. So with that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. Until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.